Hey guys, welcome to the 2016 Albuquerque Home and Garden Show. My name is Nevin, I'm with Disket Grill. Uh, we're proud to be a sponsor of this show. We've been doing cooking demos all weekend long, uh, mainly showcasing what can be cooked on the disket. We also feature different things on uh, the cooking. We manufacture things like the vertical smoker. We've got uh, this hotter machine, which is a complete tailgating system we manufacture. We also have with us Air Force One, which is kind of our uh, signature outdoor cooking grill. Uh, so we at Disney can make any kind of cooking device that you want, and uh, we'd love to be able to showcase different things to cook on. Today we have a brand new guest chef that we met a couple years ago. He's never cooked on a disc before. This is his very first time. We've been talking for a couple years about getting on a demo. Uh, so today we bring in Chef Darren Demritter. Welcome for joining us. No problem, huh? So he's going to show us how to cook some uh, Thai chicken stir fry. It's a Thai chicken stir fry. Well, so I'm going to sit back, I'm going to shut up and learn myself. So if you guys have any questions throughout, this, throughout the demo, please don't hesitate to uh, shout it out, whatever, and uh, we'll share whatever we can with you. Um, so you're going to notice here a lot of different ingredients from normal. Um, to track down in Albuquerque, there's two stores you can buy them from. What there's do you, what do you have there all together? You want to run them through and everything? I'm sorry. Yep. This should be Tallinn and 99 Vine on Gibson. Now things like ginger, everybody's seen ginger before, but not everybody's seen galangal before. What is it? Galangal. What is galangal? Galangal is, it's like a wild style ginger. It is hard as a wood, but the flavor from it is citrusy, eucalypty. It's very different, very unique. It's part of essential Thai cooking. Hmm. Um, Probably gonna ask, what does an Australian know about Thai food? Everything. <laughs> Thailand's five hours flight away from Australia, so it's a cheap holiday and the food is amazing. Um, also, we have Thai red chilies, which are tiny little things. Spicy, very, very spicy. There's no red or green with this one. It's heat all the way. And when I say heat, a little goes a long way. <laughs> Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Uh, you will pay for it the next day. <laughs> now, things like red onions, you know, uh, enoki mushrooms, which are these ones here. What's like it called? Long enoki mushroom. Enoki? Yep. Enoki mushroom. Never heard of it. It's also known as a straw mushroom, but I know it as enoki mushroom. Then we have what we call oyster mushrooms which uh, some countries call them a shiitake when they've been dried but uh, shiitakes are a little different they're a little thinner these are a bit more meaty uh, and what are those like, called? Um, you, buy, uh, um, you can buy them at Tallinn um, I find it easier going to 99 Barn they're on Gibson across from the Loveless uh, Hospital just go down there it's itemized pretty much Thai, Korean Vietnamese and so on and they have a great butcher section and seafood section down there as well and uh, about a third of the price of Thailand. What's yeah. this? This here. This is called the whole, well I call it the holy trinity for Thai cooking. <laughs> as you can see there is the red chili in there, the Thai red chili. There is sliced kaffir lime leaf. Now kaffir limes are a very different flavor and smell to a normal lime. If you give it a crush and release the oils, you'll get a much more of a smell from it. Mm. In here there is ginger, kaffir lime leaf, galangal, and I'm about to get the chit uh, sorry, the garlic going for that. I like to slice it more than mince it. It crisps up nicely in the pan. So first let me just uh, finish with the red onion. Don't try this at home folks. Train professionals here. The reason why I have everything in different containers as well is everything takes a different amount of time to cook. So the whole idea with Thai food, Asian food, is you start with your heavier ingredients. So by the time the lighter stuff's cooked, everything has a nice crispness to it, a nice freshness. I would have probably lost about two fingers by now. That's alright, you're training as a chef, you, know, you, you do tend to shave your knuckles down a bit. Um, no, I don't at the moment. 
In the future, yes. Pardon? I live here, yeah. My wife and I live down in Los Lunas. I'm working at uh, a lovely little Asian restaurant at the moment called uh, Sushi Zwan up on Tramway. I'm taking a break from Western cooking, actually uh, training to be a sushi chef. So something very, very different for me. But after 28 years of being a chef, it's all about the passion. Not so much about the uh, pay packet because it's New Mexico. Turn it off here on the back on. Yes, sir. Ideally, when cooking with uh, Thai food, Chinese food, Malay, when using uh, sesame oil, it's desirable not to actually cook with it. I forgot to bring some normal oil, so this time I'm going to. Uh, Peter oil works good, canola oil, safflower, uh, rapeseed oil, anything like that. Olive oil just has too much of a flavor to it. Yeah. Um, sesame oil doesn't handle heat too well, so we start off with our Trinity. And this is where the fun happens. This uh, releasing of the oils from the chili and the ginger and the garlic and the galangal. That just sounds fun to say, going though. Yeah. I mean, you can buy it, when you, when you find it fresh, buy it fresh. If you buy it dry, it looks like driftwood. So you do have to soak it up in water overnight so it's softened so you can cut it. Now my knives are definitely not dull, but to cut ginger, to cut a piece of gull and gull, it's... That much of a difference. It's like, it's texture wise, it's like wood. So they tend to use it a lot in soups and stews. Uh, yeah, good. Just don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit hard on the tooth. So. Yeah, go and go. And I learned a new word about go and go now. <laughs> so we're going in now with. It does, uh, go and go. Going in with our chicken. What type of chicken do you use, sir? Um, I like using Sorry. chicken thigh. Okay. Or in a skinless chicken thigh, especially when stir fry, um, it stays juicy. And you do you chop it to smaller pieces? Or? Yes, definitely chop it into a lot smaller pieces, just so it's easier to pick up with chopsticks. What's that? Let's get in there. But, excuse fingers, it is going to be cooked. So just in nice thin strips. Like you're doing fajita chicken. There you go. Uh, see, I'm from New Mexico now. How many pounds did you add to that? Um, that's about two and a half pounds. Two and a half pounds. I don't know if you guys can smell it, but I bet you never can. The smell <laughs> of the ginger and the garlic and everything. And the going go. And the smell of going go. Going go. We're going to turn it into Australia sooner or later. Go and go. Mate. G'day. G'day, mate. That's the one. On the barbie. So we work our chicken around just to get a nice coat, nice seal on it. And keep in mind, he doesn't have really hardly any oils in it at all. He had a, about a, maybe a tablespoon of sesame oil. Half a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon. The whole idea when cooking Asian food, less oil, keep it healthy. That's why they're like this <laughs> and I'm like this. It's not because I've been a chef for 28 years. Is because I don't eat as, as well as I should. But if you could cook the way I did, you wouldn't eat as well as I should eat it. <laughs> so a lot of the time taken in, in cooking the stir fry is more in the preparation than the cooking. So once you have everything chopped, it's just through and through and through. So I've kept a few things aside that I'm going to chop for you while I'm working because why not? You can see me use a knife, I get to show off. Um, I use a mixture of peppers. We use red, yellow and green. Uh, because food should be a, a feast for the eyes and not just for the, the palate. So we train in Australia, people eat 90% with their eyes, 10% with their, with their mouth. If it looks good, it tastes good. Because I've seen some food that looks absolutely terrible but tastes delicious, but because you perceive it as not being good, you don't think it tastes good. Uh, 
uh, you might notice a difference in the style of knife that I'm using. It is a uh, Chinese vegetable knife. They're cheap enough to buy and you can keep them razor sharp. And if it gets too blunt, I mean that at like four or five dollars each, you throw them away, go get them in. Really? If you don't want to sharpen them. I will sharpen them, I will take them down so they're about that big. Then it becomes a really cool letter opener. Letter <laughs> opener. What's that? This one, uh, same store, 99. Um, you won't find it on the shelf, you have to ask at the counter because like most good places they will keep sharp instruments away from idiots like me. <laughs> Should I stir that a little bit while you're cooking? Yeah. Or can please. I? Yep. I won't get yelled at. No? no. Flavors starting to come together now, they're built. Something we also get from 99. Now, if you want a wet curry, use the Thai green curry paste, it's a maple oil. A little goes a long way as well. It's it's spicy, it's good, but you finish it with coconut milk. That's beautiful! Coconut milk <laughs> or coconut cream. So essentially, like Nevin's taking photos, it looks like a Thai chicken fajita but with extras. What's that? This is the maple oil Thai curry paste. Maple oil? Maple oil. Maple oil. That's the name Do I mix it. it in or leave it? Yep, no, mix away. That's it there. Um, what, what's in it? Basically there's... Uh, <laughs> you guys call it cilantro, we call it coriander. The okay. whole root, leaf, no seed because that's what we call cilantro back home. Very different. Um, there is Golangal. Did they say that with a Golangal. 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 Um, and assorted herbs. There's a Thai basil, which uh, I'm lucky enough to find some of the ingredients for it here. Um, okay, that's the basil. That's Vietnamese or Thai holy basil. I ate that language. That's the holy, Thai holy basil. Is it different? Very different. Can I smash it like you showed me earlier? Yeah. In any good herb, you release the oils by crushing it. It has a very different flavor than normal basil. It's got a minty and a seedy, a little bit of heat in there. That's purple basil. Yes, it's green, but the stem is purple. This has more of an aniseed flavor. So all these flavors are good. They get chopped. They go in. It just adds to the freshness of the dish. You heard me, huh? So now I'm going to grow like a, 10 different basils in my garden. Is that what you're um, Can you grow those here? You can. You can grow them here. But like I was saying before, with Thai food and Asian food, fresh is best. So instead of buying frozen or crushed herbs or dried, the fresher the better. So now we're in with there, we can go in with our, our oyster mushrooms. Now, do you want these left on top so they kind of steam or mix them in? Mix them in. Everything gets a good stir fry. Hence the name stir fry. And I thought that was funny. <laughs> Well, I was just now, thinking a lot of times with me with mushrooms, if I overcook them, then they just become too mushy and not like you know, almost all dense. You want you want the moisture to come out of this, which gives it the liquid. Okay. So we're not using a we're not using a um, coconut milk or a coconut cream with it. This is a drier stir fry. So if we're to add noodles to it later, it helps stick to the noodle and add your liquid. So you're not having to add water or things like this. Now, because yeah, you can see the, the liquid coming out from the vegetables now. Yeah. This is a long bean. That's a short bean. <laughs> These are different to the snake bean. The snake beans are a little bit thicker and can get about that long. These I have trimmed back. These are about this long. They they're great cooked and they're great raw. 
Um, good in salads, good vegetables. It's just very, very tasty. Different to a normal green bean in flavor. These you don't want to cook too much, so we chop them down into three. These you want to keep crispy. Well, then big. Well, there you go. We're going to use French. Okay, Italian, but I know that. <laughs> now, the straw mushrooms, the noki mushrooms, are the last to go in. These, basically, 30 seconds in a pan, they're done. You cook them anymore, they start to wilt, and all the water comes out. And Pull them apart, you can see why they're called straw mushrooms. And now, uh, because he used Italian, I'll use French. Mais tui? Or, or, or a snow pea, mate. They're called snow peas, alright? What do they call them in Australia? In, in America? Snow peas. Snow peas, snow peas. Snow peas. Snow peas. Cool. Last but not least to go in are the bean sprouts. Now these aren't normal bean sprouts. These are super sprouts. These are mung beans. I like the mung beans because they have a better flavor and uh, they're good for you. Oh, Just gonna go in with a handful of these to make it look pretty. Because like I said, it's all about this is cool. visual. It's like eating with a heart. Now, this bad boy here, this is our umame. Umame is your salty, bitter flavors. It brings food together. Um, another form of umame is soy sauce, um, ponzu sauce. Ponzu, you might not know about it. It's more of a Japanese. It has uh, almost like a grapefruit soy sauce. It's Great with sashimi. Smells like dirty old socks. When it's cooked, it tastes amazing. And it's one of those things as well. A little goes a long way. Ooh, it does smell like dirty old socks at first, huh? Where do you buy it at? Um, same ones. There's different brands. I like the squid brand. It's not as stinky as the others. Um, this is at 99 bar. Yep, down here. Yeah. That that's American. That's no. No. It's personal taste. Really it is. It's personal taste. The same with sesame oil. I like to use Japanese black sesame seed. Only because when you cook with it it goes bitter, but when you come down to the last Bit. We can turn that off and we're done. Now, when sesame oil, can you choose it? A little bit on your finger. No, he's a first it warms. That's sesame oil, black sesame oil. Yep, from 99 Yeah. Oh, it's actually triple nine. You know where the Loveless Hospital is on Gibson? So I'm Australian, I know where it is. If you head, if you head straight, straight down San Pedro, uh, it gets to the end, it's uh, Gibson Road, Gibson Boulevard. Uh, turn, turn right, going down about a mile, and a setback, you'll see a Starbucks, an overpass, um, big A, H, N. But it's, it's, it's also known as Triple Nine Seafood. It's on the sign on the side. They changed their name, their name on me. So I still call it 99 Barn. That's it. That's it. That's not it yet. I forgot the green onion. Thank you very much. Oh, it's right here. That's my fault. I put it on. Well, oh, green onion is the last thing to go in. Can we turn it back on? And not because I forgot it. No, no. Keep it off. Oops. You still hear me alright? Now, the reason why it's the last thing to go in, it's very soft veg. So, I'm 
mix it? Mix it in. It all goes in with the color. The tops I like to leave pretty large. The bottom parts right. are for pretties. Tops are for pretties? Tops go in. You know when you look at it, that's the bottom. Right. This is where you sprinkle on top when you finish it. You know. um, the friends call it garnish. We, we in the industry just call it pretty. Pretty. Or if you're from the south of here, it's a party. And when you plate it with your noodles, you sprinkle on top. Pretty. New sous chef, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's passed the stirring exam so far, so. That's the first. That looks good. That's a good demo right there, man. I think I tried it. <laughs> now I take it out? It's, it's a feast for the eye as well as the palate. Your Thai food, Asian food, it's my happy place. Gentlemen here would like to try some. There you go, first ever Thai food cooked in a discount.